this video we're going to take a look at camera angles and camera shots for Creative Eye Media. So first things first, before we start, the reason why we're going over camera angles, and it seems a little bit out of sequence with the other videos where we've done mind maps and mood boards, is that for R81 you're going to be using or referring to camera angles in storyboards. You also might have to use them in R86, creating digital animation, R089, creating a digital video sequence, and R090, creating digital photography. So it covers quite a few different units. Now you might not necessarily use them. I'm not going to be covering every single camera angle and camera shot. I'm just going to be going over the main ones used in the specification and the sort of main ones you're going to be referring to in exam questions. So first things first, we need to talk about the word composition. So this is the way a scene is arranged to give meaning. It helps guide the viewer's eye to particular areas of the image or video, which is called the focal point. Now, when we're actually composing and creating our scenes and our images, so this works for both photography and for videography, we can use what's called the rule of thirds. So we can split our scene into nine equal rectangles Usually we put the more important elements in the middle, in the middle of three like that. And if you notice on uh, some phones and uh, various digital cameras, they'll have like a grid view and that adds in these sort of squares, these rectangles. And we can use that to compose our images and make them a lot more equal and make it a lot easier on the eye. You can see in this picture here that we've got that um, mist cloudy sort of areas in the top a third of the grid we've got the main object which is the person walking away in the middle three rectangles and then the rest of the scene goes into the bottom. Now as I've already spoken about we've got the focal point which is a uh, created by using either the geography of the area so it could be that you're using uh, mountains and maybe that you're in a city and using maybe like the lines on a bridge to draw someone's attention or it could be that you're filming or taking a photo of a particular person. Now if you look at this image you can see that you look at his face like you do with most pictures of people the first thing you do is you look at their face that's natural. Now how humans have sort of evolved is to almost be naturally curious as to where that person's looking. If you if somebody points at something near you, you don't look at their finger like maybe an animal would, like a dog, you look at the thing they're potentially pointing at. So you can see in this image, because the sailor there is looking down, you automatically get drawn to look at what he's doing with that paper. So your focal point is going to be around here. Now the position of the camera allows us to use the composition and content of the scene we're creating to create some sort of mood and a feeling. It doesn't matter if you're uh, making a video, making a film, making animation, or you're just taking a photo, there's usually some form of mood or feeling that you're trying to convey when you take the image. So this can be reinforced by where the camera is when the picture is actually being taken or when the video is being filmed. And this is called framing. And quite often it puts the, the end user, the viewer, in the position of the camera to make them feel as if they're in the scene. Now a camera shot is the whole sort of series of the scene that you're filming for an uninterrupted amount of time. It doesn't matter if the object is moving or you're going between different areas or you're moving the camera until you stop filming or stop rolling. That is what's called one camera shot. Now, what we can do is we can manipulate and change the shot size to create our scene and start developing that story. So some examples are extreme wide shot, long shot, full shot, cowboy shot, medium shot, close up and extreme close up. Now I'm going to cover some of the basic camera shots in the animation on the next slide. So you can see we can zoom in to the object which is this uh, lady on the screen and have a close up. We can then zoom in further and have maybe a medium close up or a big close up. And then we can have an extreme close up where we go straight into their face and sort of look at their eyes and things like that. Then we can have what's called a medium long shot where you sort of almost get in the full body but not quite. You can then zoom out further and have the whole body as a long shot and then you can get lots of the scenes in to have a very long shot. And then you can have things like the opposite of an extreme close up could be an extreme long shot or an extreme wide shot where you get in a really wide area and the object looks really really small. 
So the close-up is what we use to show detail, especially when you're trying to do facial expressions. It might be that somebody is maybe testifying in court and they're trying to sort of make them look like they're sweating or lying. You might do an extreme close-up to look at that. Uh, sometimes certain films have clips where they're just showing somebody's eyes, maybe to see where they're looking or something like that. That is where we'd use a close-up. Or you might just have a nice headshot using a close-up of their neck upwards. We've then got the long shot which shows usually a whole object or a whole person and we generally use this to sort of set the scene as you can see the surroundings, you can see what's going on as well as seeing the whole object in some amount of detail. Some other shots we might have is a two shot so we can use a two shot to sort of show that a couple's together maybe to have some form of romantic feeling or you might have an over the shoulder shot where you're trying to put the audience into the character's shoes so you almost feel like you're a part of that conversation as maybe a third party for example. Now an aerial shot is a shot that's taken from a high vantage point usually to show like a wide area of the landscape or it could be even to sort of give a deeper understanding of what's happening below. If you think about in Harry Potter for example when they're in the, that maze in the Goblet of Fire. You notice that Harry goes into um, the maze, nothing particularly interesting there, then it zooms out and uses an aerial shot which sort of explains um, and shows how large that maze actually is. What that does is that sort of shows the audience how huge the maze is, it sort of gives a deeper understanding of how difficult the last trial is going to be. So then we've got our actual camera angle. So we've spoken about uh, zooming into people's faces to do close-ups and wide shots and things like that. We can then use certain camera angles to create feelings and moods and further enhance our story. So we could use a low angle shot. So the idea of this is to make an object seem bigger and often it's sort of the idea of making something seem bigger, greater or more power. So we see we've got this picture of Darth Vader, it's from below which sort of makes him look a bit taller, makes him look more imposing and makes him look a little bit scarier. You might also take uh, a low angle shot of say a building to make it look even taller than it actually is or to make the audience feel like they're really really small. Similarly we can do the opposite and use a high angle shot so we can make an object seem smaller which sort of gives the idea of weakness. So Harry, Harry Potter's trying to fight a Dementor in this scene so he is getting an angle from a high angle shot which sort of shows that he's smaller, maybe not as powerful as a Dementor and sort of shows his struggle a little bit, maybe shows that he's almost scared and frightened like he is in the scene. And then we've got a virtual camera. Now the reason we're covering this is that there has been a previous exam question asking what is a virtual camera. Now we use these in animated films, in CGI and in games and a virtual camera is essentially like a normal camera however it's a function of the animation software that works and behaves in the same way a camera or digital camera would in a real world situation. So the screenshot we've got here is uh, from Unity which is a program you can use to create games. Quite a lot of games have been made in Unity and when you've got a 3D game you can actually have a virtual camera for a 3D model and that would maybe do like a circle around the objects you've built. Similarly in my earlier animation, admittedly it's not the best animation because I am still trying to teach myself After Effects, but what I used was a 2D camera which allowed me to zoom into my scene without having to change the size of any of my objects. I just literally added the virtual camera which allowed me to zoom in and zoom out. And thank you for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.